So here is the Creality ferret scanner. Slide down, there it is. It comes in a very, very sturdy box or um, pouch, if you could call it that. And it has a zip all the way around. And if you unzip it all the way around, like so, and you open it up, this has obviously been used, it's not straight out of the box. You have a manual, which is there. And this is downloadable from the Creality website if you wanted to see that. And just for information, I'll give you the technical specs, which will save me by saying it all later on. But here's the technical specs for the unit if you're interested. Hopefully, you can read that. And um, that's, that's basically the manual. You get a manual in the box, you get a manual in the box. You get an Allen key in the box. You get a couple of USB adapters in case your phone, it connects to a phone this, so you might want to connect it via a, a USB-C or USB-B uh, mini. And I think that's all you get in the back there. So you get in here a nice stand. And this is the stand that comes with it. It's a tripod. It's a battery charger as well. And because your mobile phone plugs into that port there. And you can charge it from there as well. And when you plug your phone in, it automatically comes on. But that goes like that. That's your, um, let me put that over there for a moment. There's your tripod, which comes with it. So we've seen the tripod. You also get uh, in the in the box a adapter which is used to attach the ferret scanner to the tripod and this attaches to the phone mount which has a, an adjustable width for um, accommodation most phones you pull that apart and the two clamps clamp your phone securely in between the two clamps if you want to use this with your mobile this adapter slides into the hot shoe, which is on the end of the unit, like so. And this knurled nut is screwed down to tighten it to the phone holder. Once it's attached to the fold holder, the tripod can be screwed into the bottom. There is a, a screw on the top of the tripod and there's a threaded hole in the phone adapter this screws together like so and um, there you have up there you have the tripod ready to attach your ferret scanner for phone use to use the ferret scanner uh, without the mobile phone this uh, base is removed The adapter is removed from the hot shoe on the top of the mobile phone holder. This is screwed into the tripod like so. There you have the tripod ready to go. So let's mount the, uh, the scanner to the tripod. Here is the scanner. There is a uh, a threaded hole at the bottom of the scanner and there's also a, a screw with a knurled nut on the top of the tripod this screw this screw screws into that threaded hole like this and once tightened up it comes becomes quite secure there it is. So there's your ferret scanner. All ready to go. This here is the uh, little handle which tightens up the elevation control so that stops that from moving. And, and there you have it. 
ready to go for a scan. So I'll now show you a video of this scanning an object. The object is a uh, car shaped metal tin, which we are scanning because we are going to make a pencil case from the scan. This is a car pencil case and there'll be a video on this uh, channel showing how that was um, made, including the scanning, the processing and the 3D printing of the pencil case. So if you see the video online, uh, give it a check it out. And um, if you like and subscribe, it would be much appreciated. And uh, we will probably do a few more. So let's get into the video of the um, process of scanning with the ferret scanner. So here is a video of the ferret scanner in operation. The first thing uh, you do when you open the Creality Scan software, this is version 1.0.4, um, it confirms that you are connected via a USB and it confirms that you are on a USB 3. If you select uh, face and quality and color and then press new scan, this is what you're presented with. Now, as you can see, I've got a small turntable, a little cheap plastic turntable, which was got from uh, Amazon or something for about five or 10 quid or something like that, just a cheap one. And what we've done, um, it has variable speeds on it. It's set to the slowest speed and ideally it could be a little bit slower as, as you can see the scanner lost tracking because it was going too fast it does pick it up again but if this was going a lot slower it wouldn't um, miss it i have found with the scanner you have to start off really really slow start off scanning an object or part of the object which has a lot of contours in it and not uh, just flat uh, sections if you start off with a contoured section let it pick up a little move the scanner one to two centimeters to the left and right to get some of the frames you can see the frames uh, building up the frames will not increase it won't take any more frames unless you physically move the scanner so as you can see if you that way if as you can see if you move the scanner very very slightly to start off with and then as what i'm doing now the scanner was mounted on the table uh, looking horizontally towards the car i'm now lifting the scanner up from the table very very slowly so i am now getting a view above the the car or the object itself when the scan is all green, that means you've got a, a good scan and uh, it should be good enough to uh, process and save. Every now and then, if you see it going to red, that means it's lost its tracking. And be just then you saw I moved the object out of the frame and that's why it, it like now, where the object's out of the frame, it can't see or reference to the object. So now it's got it again. So I left this running for um, probably about four minutes or so, something like that. Um, and I got a reasonable scan. You complete the scan by pressing the complete button. And what this does, it then takes you to the menus on the right hand side to um, process it like so so scanning is complete now we're going to um, optimize the scan now i've gone for maximum optimization here for this scan and i'm doing it manually you can do it in automatic but i've decided to do it in manual um, which I think is an easy way you can, you can select what you physically want to um, see or not see. So let's go in there, get this optimization done. 
I've speeded these up. These take probably about, I would say, five to eight minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. My computer is quite a fast computer, so it, it probably took about, the whole thing took about 10 minutes, I would guess. But I've, I've speeded it up, this up quite a lot to make it easier for people to see. That's why you can see it suddenly goes from 21% up to something like 90% and then done. Right, there we are. So this is where we're setting the mesh, mesh settings. I've put maximum faces, uh, middle denoise, which takes away a bit of noise off the object. I'm filling the holes and I'm closing it all up. And this should, once the meshing is finished, it will make a, a solid body from the scan that we've just done. And this solid body can be taken out and into your favorite uh, 3D processing software, such as Mesh Mixer or um, whichever one you want to use. There's a couple of programs you can use. Mesh, mesh mixer or fusion 360 so i'm going to select color mapping now it'll put the color onto the object so here we go this is very very quick once this is done i'm going to leave it there and that's just a very very brief look at the creality ferret scanner you can buy this online i paid for it this is not a um a review or anything like that it's just a very basic overview of my experience with it so there's the color image and that's what we're left with so i hope you like this video it gives you a bit of an insight on what you can do with a 3d scanner 